क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम इकीडा Hello friends as we have discussed earlier that is uh, there are different types of hydrates and we have uh, recently we have did uh, that is ionic hydride and now we are going to discuss about that is what are covalent hydrates and uh, basically what are the properties of those hydrates so let us discuss about that. So talking about the covalent hydrides uh, as we have discussed earlier that is uh, the covalent hydrides are formed whenever the hydrogen is combined with that of uh, the uh, p block elements especially so suppose if i am talking about uh, the p block element like uh, carbon so carbon can easily form uh, that is bond with that of the hydrogen and this is what uh, the molecule that is ch4 is the other molecules are nh3 or we could also say like hf So these are the three examples that I have uh, mentioned about uh, talking about that is a covalent hydride. So why they are basically called as covalent hydride? It depends on the bond they form as well as it depends on the element to which they are been combining. So for example, if we talk about that is CH4. So we know that CH4 as well as NH3 and HF. So these are basically uh, volatile substances and they are basically unlike uh, ionic hydrides. Ionic hydrates are basically they are in solid state, but uh, in this case, basically covalent hydrates they are basically of the gaseous form. And uh, talking about CH4, CH4 is a gas uh, in the gaseous state, and uh, basically they form a covalent bond between each other. Covalent hydrates. So it uh, that is in ammonia also that is the same case. And uh, talking about HF again, it is the same thing that I am talking about. So. But there are also certain kind of classification that we could see in the covalent hydrides and what are those let me discuss about that so for that uh, let me tell you uh, that is it depends on the Lewis structure yes it depends on the Lewis structure and it also depends on the number of lone pair of electrons that are being present in the central atom uh, so central atom of the hydride and depending on that uh, basically they are classified into three categories if I talk about the first one electron deficient hydride so what are uh, the electron deficient hydride let me give you an example but let me uh, discuss first uh, that is what are the types of it so let me discuss about the second one and that is uh, electron precise hydride so in this case basically uh, there is no extra lone pair of electron on the central atom uh, of the hydride nor there is electron which is less on the central atom so as to complete that octet so it is very much precise and that's the reason that electron precise hydride has been known so i will talk about the various examples of it also but uh, let me discuss uh, first about uh, the third uh, classification of the covalent hydride electron rich hydride so these are the three uh, types of these are the three classifications of the covalent hydrides and uh, for which i have to give examples so that we could understand in a better way and we should understand that what are the different uh, classifications uh, and types of uh, that is covalent hydride so never wasting the time let us discuss about the first one that is electron deficient hydride so talking about the electron deficient hydride so let me discuss about uh, an example that is uh, bh3 boron hydride so if we discuss about uh, the central atom then we could get to know that boron is the one which is uh, the central atom of uh, uh, central element of uh, the hydride and uh, let us discuss about uh, the electronic configuration of that first because then only we could be able to know whether it is uh, electron deficient rich or precise so for boron we know that the atomic number of boron is 5 so we could uh, write uh, the electronic configuration as 1s2 2s2 and 2p1 but we also know about the hydrogen suppose if i if i talk about the electronic configuration of hydrogen which has an atomic number of one so that could be written as that is 1s1 and let me discuss about that uh, uh, the orbitals here so s has only one orbital while p it consists of basically three orbitals over here as you could see i mentioned here in this manner and the s consists of basically uh, Two electrons and uh, the p consists of one electron so as to occupy three uh, hydrogens so this is somewhere i'm uh, moving towards the hybridization so this is how we could get that is three unpaired electrons while shifting that is one electron uh, from the s orbital to p uh, orbital and of the boron and thereby as we know that hydrogen consists of only one electron so therefore the three electrons of uh, hydrogen each that could occupy that is uh, three orbitals one is s one is p and another p that is sp2 hybridization and thereby but we could see that uh, the total number of electrons uh, around the central atom that is uh, for uh, bh3 that is b 
boron it would be basically six and that's the reason that uh, they are not completely uh, having an electron configuration which would complete the octate and that's the reason that they are known as electron deficient species and electron deficient hydride so they need more two electrons so as to get a complete octate and that is what uh, they are known as uh, electron deficient hydrate but still these hydrates are very much stable so that's the reason that uh, usually boron hydrates are the one they uh, they form that is diborane that is b2h6 and uh, that is what i want to talk about here so that's the reason that uh, because of the deficiency of uh, that is a uh, uh, electron so this bh3 they act like so Lewis acids are those uh, uh, species which uh, have a capability to accept a lone pair of electron from the other molecule so this is how the electron deficient hydride are known as so this was one of the example and now let us move on to the next one that is electron precise hydride so let me give you an example uh, that is CH4 so this is basically the carbon is the one that is belonging to that is P block element and uh, let me discuss about the electron configuration this is somewhere we have did in our uh, that is uh, previous topic that is nature of chemical bond let me discuss about this again so for talking about carbon so we have an atomic number of uh, six for carbon and uh, what we could say is we could write the electronic configuration as 1s2 2s2 and 2p2 so if we observe the uh, orbital so we'll get to know that uh, p subshell consists of three orbitals that is px py pz and uh, it and uh, each of the orbital uh, that we have will be occupying one electron after the hybridization or after the excitation of electron so we could see that uh, there are basically four orbitals that are will left uh, with an uh, unpaired electron and uh, that is how basically four electrons of the hydrogen that could occupy the space in it and uh, that's the reason that we could say that the carbon is the one which has been surrounded by more four electrons and if we talk about this uh, ch4 then uh, ch4 uh, if we talk about the carbon atom over here so carbon atom has basically valency of four one two three and four and after occupying the uh, uh, the hydrogen atoms so in in hybridization concept we could get to know that uh, hydrogen is the one that would be forming a bond with uh, the carbon over here and thereby you could see that is the carbon is now surrounded by eight electrons one two three four five six seven and eight so this eight electrons makes the methane to have a precise electron so as to complete its octate and that is how uh, this kind of hydrates are basically known as electron precise hydrates because this uh, uh, in this case basically the central uh, element doesn't uh, have an electron deficiency neither it has an extra electron so that is how basically electron precise hydrates are known as so especially this was an example related to that is methane where we have got to know about what are uh, electron precise hydrates so in this case basically the whole group uh, uh, of the carbon uh, like if i talk about silicon also so they uh, have uh, they could be considered as electron precise hydride in in terms of classification so that was related to the electron precise hydride and now let us move to the last so now talking about electron rich hydride so let me give you an example that is for uh, as an example like h2 if you talk the, about the lewis structure um, or if we talk about the uh, general structure of h2 that how can we represent we can represent the h2 in terms of uh, this where we could see that uh, there are two lone pair of electrons and where we could basically uh, we mentioned this two lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom so here basically if you observe that uh, the electronic configuration of uh, oxygen which has an atomic number of eight that could be written as 1s2 2s2 2p4 and that how basically by accepting two electrons of uh, hydrogen and during the bond formation we could see uh, that is uh, the oxygen is now been completely fulfilled with its uh, 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 electronic configuration and having a stable electronic configuration but uh, somewhere we have talking about electron rich hydride so in the previous two examples where we have discussed about uh, that is uh, electron deficient and electron precise hydride we have never seen this lone pair of electrons especially i'm talking about the lone pair of electrons so this plays a very vital role in acting like a lewis base
So because of this lone pair of electron on the central atom, they uh, are known as electron rich hydride. And that's the reason that uh, we can take another example like NH3. So in NH3 basically we could say that uh, even though by completing its octet we could find that there is an electron pair on it that is on the nitrogen and that is what uh, uh, like H2O, NH3 and we could also say like for HF if you talk about where uh, the fluorine is the one that consists of basically 3 unpaired electrons and this is how basically they are known as electron rich hydride and they are acting like Lewis base. So this is what I want to talk about uh, the uh, covalent hydrides. But let me discuss about the another things also that is uh, since they are very much uh, volatile in nature so therefore obviously we could say that they uh, contain electricity and uh, that is how there are also certain properties and uh, talking about the solubility that is uh, NH3 is soluble in water in even uh, basically HF since it is uh, very much reactive so obviously it will produce a vigorous reaction. So there are certain kind of properties and uh, this were certain uh, things about I was talking about the molecular hydrates. So thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you have understood that is what are molecular hydrates uh, or especially known as uh, covalent hydrates and what are the different types of it. So that's it. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope you will share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much.